All right, I'm going to try something different for this video. So this video is going to be a mini essay with minimal editing and a much shorter script than my usual videos. And as such, this video is going to be really general and won't cover anything too specific. But as usual, if you want to know more, there are references in the description. Let me know what you think. Also, content warning for violence, death, and murder. This is Luis Eduardo Guerra. He was the founder of the peace community in San Jose de Apartado, a small village in Colombia. The community he founded and led has a simple goal, non-violence. This means they won't in any way support either the right-wing paramilitaries or the left-wing insurgents, and stay neutral in the fight between the left and right-wing forces across Colombia. And yet, even with this commitment to peace, Luis Eduardo Guerra and his young son were butchered all the same by a paramilitary group connected to the Colombian government in 2005. Guerra and thousands like him were the victims of paramilitary death squads funded by an American initiative designed by none other than Joe Biden. It's called Plan Colombia, and it was aimed at fighting drug cartels and left-wing insurgents, though it was mostly about eradicating the latter. The plan was signed into law by Bill Clinton in 2000, and essentially, it was an expansion of previous American policy in the country, which has been meddling in Colombian affairs for close to 70 years at that point. It saw billions funneled into the country's right-wing government, who would then turn around and buy arms from American arms manufacturers and training from American PMCs. Those weapons, in turn, were used to massacre civilians who were resisting the government. And no, I'm not even talking about those left-wing insurgents. They literally massacred regular civilians, many of whom were leaders of co-ops and unions, or peace activists like Guerra. One of the more egregious examples of this was the false positive scandal, where the Colombian military, which again is supported by the US, killed hundreds of civilians and dressed up the corpses as leftist guerrillas. One study even claimed the number of victims of the scandal was in the thousands. And this is just one case. There were many more massacres and killings by government forces and paramilitaries, which again, were funded by the American government. In fact, government-linked paramilitaries were responsible for 80% of all political murders. These paramilitary groups are the definition of death squads. Let's talk about the creation of the Plan Colombia itself. See, there is, or there was, I guess, a left-wing insurgent group in Colombia called FARC, whose goal is pretty much similar to other revolutionary leftist groups, i.e. overthrow the government, create a socialist society, etc., etc. They have since been demobilized, sort of. But for the better part of the 20th century, the Colombian government and FARC have been at war pretty much continuously, with the American government and businesses funding the Colombian government, and FARC getting their funding from drug trafficking, mostly cocaine. Anyways, jumping to the late 90s, right after neoliberalism destroyed the livelihood of millions in the early 90s, FARC actually ended up controlling an area the size of Switzerland, which freaked Washington out. Around the same time, the then president of Colombia actually came up with a proposal to make peace with FARC and end violence. The original proposal was focused on social developments and investments, essentially giving the people of Colombia more opportunities beside coca farming. It even considered FARC an important part of the whole thing, and allowed room for the government to enact peace talks with them. They sent the proposal to the US for funding, but then Mr. Malarkey over here hijacked the proposal and turned it into what it was. Well, alright, it wasn't only him that hijacked it. Bill Clinton and other Democrats were in on it too, but Biden had such a hard-on for the plan that he championed it like it was a billionaire giving him shitloads of money. He was the leading advocate for the hardline version of the initiative, which involved giving billions to the Colombian government to ostensibly eradicate drug cartels. The plan would morph into a highly militaristic initiative, where 75% of the fund would go to armament purchases and military training. Of course, these politicians also had help from arms manufacturers lobbyists, since the money given to the Colombian government would actually end up in their hands, and oil companies lobbyists, since Colombia has oil. The thing though, that money ended up supporting paramilitary groups and death squads. There was an extremely close connection between the military and the paramilitary. So much so that some paramilitary groups were actually organized by the Colombian military itself while using counterinsurgency tactics devised by the US. On top of that, these groups were also connected to the drug trade. That's right, they were giving money to the same people they were supposed to be fighting, at least on paper. And they knew this full well, but it didn't matter. See, the true goal of this initiative was to preserve the American interest in the country, specifically American businesses' interests. Companies like Chiquita International, you know, the company that sells you your bananas, have been meddling in Colombia for the past god knows how long, suppressing workers' movements and co-ops, and this initiative was an extension of that. See, FARC didn't pop up out of nowhere. There was, and still is, legitimate reasons for the workers and communities to organize. But every time they tried to organize, the bourgeoisie would just try to crush it, with the help of the American government, of course. Plan Colombia, then, was just the continuation of that dynamic. That's why the plan was hijacked, since the original one would have given workers some power over the means of production. And we can't have that now, can we? And so, they were willing to go as far as funding death squads to terrorize the populace. 
Now, you can argue Biden didn't form these death squads, or conduct the operations, or whatever. Sure, you can say that. But like, he must have known where the money was going. The connections between the Colombian military, paramilitary groups, and the drug trade were well known at that point. Hell, I mean the goddamn CIA released a cable describing the connections between the director of the Colombian National Police and the leader of a paramilitary group. On top of that, they also knew how brutal and violent the paramilitary groups are, but they conveniently chose to ignore all of these. And let me remind you, in his own words, Biden was one of the architects of the plan, and as such, it was him who had to ignore those reports. In truth, I don't think he cared about the lives of the people on the ground. There were better ways to accomplish what they were trying to do, but that initiative made him look strong. It made him look like he's taking the lead in the war on drugs, which at the time was all the rage. And since the money was earmarked for weapons and military training, it makes sense that we would see the extensive use of them against civilians. He must have known all of these. And again, Biden hijacked the plan and turned it into a militaristic initiative. It would have been less work for him to just accept the original plan of Colombia and champion it. But instead, he took a plan for peace and stopping violence and turned it into an initiative to fund brutal repression of Colombian people. So is he responsible for the death squad? Well, let me put it this way. Had things gone a little bit differently, say if Biden didn't have such a hard-on for hardline policies, tens of thousands of people might still be alive. Peace, in this case, was actually an option. And this brings me to my final point. Both Democrats and Republicans really love to stick their dicks in other countries and fuck shit up, usually in the name of American interests. If you look at past and current American presidential candidates, almost all of them, except for one, maybe, have supported imperialist projects like Plan Colombia and are willing to support them in the future. All of them should be held accountable for the policies they promote because these imperialist programs are causing massive harm to the people of the world. But since we, as in non-Americans, cannot vote for the American president, we need to depend on the American people to do that for us. So please, America, stop your goddamn malarkey and choose wisely.